Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Yggdrasil, and today we are going to be talking Zelda. More specifically, why despite everything Tears of the Kingdom offers, I'm still left wanting. Now hear me out, we've had Tears of the Kingdom for around two months now, and if you're anything like me, you've spent pretty much most of your free time still getting reacquainted with the land of Hyrule after the upheaval. But if you're also like me, then you'll have found yourself at a crossroads between enjoying the game's overworld and overall state of gameplay, while feeling nostalgic for the main storytelling present in previous Zelda titles. That's not to say that the world building or progression of the main story's impact was poor. In fact, I loved that as Link traversed through all of the regions, helping to solve all of the problems, we saw those observable changes in each of said regions. I am simply talking about the main story itself in earnest. I mean, come on, Demon King? Secret Stones? No game should ever have the player endure the same cutscene like that over and over again, and Tears of the Kingdom's main story commits to that sin of storytelling so many times that by the time I realized what was going on, I just never bothered to watch the cutscenes again and I opted for strolling about my apartment and doing whatever I could to pass the time till that scene finished. Needless to say, any story that pulls out the player from feeling invested to the point where they get up and leave is just not a good one, and I know that there are many other people who share that same sentiment. All of this lengthy preamble to say that while I'm still playing through Tears of the Kingdom and having a lot of fun, I'm still left disappointed by the fact that the last two mainline Zelda titles have been lackluster writing in the story department and that has me asking myself this question, what could be the story for the next big Zelda game? Which then turn into another, more specific question, what Zelda game do I just absolutely want to see the most? And unfortunately, I truly believe that the current Zelda team would never produce it. So then, what is this game that I want to see so much? Well, we actually have a large part of it already. It rests within the Hyrule Historia. Originally published back in 2011, a month after Skyward Sword's release, came the Hyrule Historia, an official collector's book of the Zelda series that covers every entry in the franchise up to that point in time, and it's also famously, or rather infamously known, for having the first official timeline for all Zelda titles, showing how everything sprouted from the events of Skyward Sword, before having its continuity split based on three scenarios that could have occurred at the end of Ocarina of Time. The number one Zelda game that I earnestly dream of seeing then actually takes place prior to Skyward Sword. That is, the earliest possible age, the Age of the Gods. It would be the story of the goddess Hylia, the truest form of demise, and the original hero, the original Link. Want more context? Well, the Hyrule Historia continues to provide. While we do have an inkling of what happened in the Age of Gods through the main story of Skyward Sword, things are kept vague enough with regards to Hylia's sacrifice and setting the gears of motion that enact the crux of every Zelda title. That is, that in every time, a hero named Link will rise to the occasion to save the realm from the encroaching evil. The last few pages of the Hyrule Historia then share an official one-shot manga that makes an earnest depiction on what the story of the Age of Gods was like. And while all of the officially licensed Zelda manga are non-canonical, I found myself utterly intrigued with what could be possible in that age before Skyward Sword, and I see no reason as to why this could not be turned into a new entry. In this manga, we have the hero Link who, midway through his campaign, warns the people of something sinister that he foresaw that will soon assail the land. For expressing his concerns, he is accosted and subjugated by the nobility who would rather turn a blind eye and he is subsequently thrown in jail. Suffering in prison for an excruciating four years, he is only released when the realm is truly on the brink of collapse. Yet his love for the land of Hyrule and the people that call it home couldn't even be shaken by this unspeakable betrayal and he once again takes arms to protect the realm at all costs. After then being visited upon by the goddess Hylia, who delivers unto Link the Master's Sword, Link then goes on a journey to break down and reforge the sword so that he as a mortal man can wield it. With the tempered Master Sword in hand, 
Link and the people of Hyrule fight against the armies of the Demon King Demise, but during that final confrontation, it's actually Link that loses, and he ends up giving his life to nobly ensure that the people of Hyrule can escape upon the earth rent by Hylia to ascend up into the sky. Adding what's left of his own strength to her cause, and with the power of the Triforce and the Sacred Dragons of the Realm, Link then falls, succumbing to his wounds and perishes with a smile, knowing that his people are safe and that Hyrule will somehow endure. And this is the part that I am convinced that while it is so epic and such a tragic ending for the original hero to embrace, Nintendo won't ever likely go for this route in a mainline Zelda title. Case in point, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity was originally thought of by fans to have this dark and twisted ending where all of the champions would have perished and Link and Zelda were thrust into their respective roles, leading to the main events of the Breath of the Wild. But instead, Nintendo opted to throw in an alternate timeline excuse rather than execute a story that ends in tragedy. And no, I'm not saying that Nintendo won't ever publish games that are meant to end on dark or sad tones. To that, I present Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torn of the Golden Country, a DLC story and standalone game that took place 500 years prior to the main events of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 that also ends in extreme tragedy with dark and macabre themes in play. I'm not saying that Nintendo does not make or publish games that end in tragedy, I'm just saying that as one of their main pillar franchises, far more central to their success than a series like Xenoblade Chronicles, they won't ever have a mainline Zelda title end this way. Bittersweet is fair game, mind. We have that in Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess, for example, but never tragic. If anything else, I just earnestly hope that at least the next mainline Zelda title returns to its routes in establishing a far more story-centered game. Though given both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom's explosive success as open-world games, and Nintendo's own voiced uncertainty in returning to more older, more linear-paced titles, it's all up in the air right now. I keep thinking to myself, why can't we just have a sprawling open world with said linear story? Why keep everything so symmetrical wherever you choose to go in terms of progression? We'll just have to see. But what would you like to see? Do you think a game about the very first Link could go over well, even if it's a game that's meant to end in tragedy? Do you think the next Zelda game will have a linear story or trend once again in the same vein as Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom? Let me know down below and please be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing if you're interested in my content, and this has been Yggdrasil as always, hoping that you have a great day.